the left, um, there's like Um, if that, if, if that, um, flavor juice is not going to get drank, just, just, okay. I drank it. Oh. Hi. I don't know where Sam is. So. Um, you're muted. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I said I was going to try to go in person, but I got super delayed and tied up, and I'm just like, I'll just jump on here. It'd be easy. Water, please. Okay, that was good. Okay. Yes, we get to see the people coming to That's really nice that we came. Oh. Yeah. 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 yeah, I found that we had a new neighbor and a cat, and I love that. Cat one of them. Nobody comes here today. Yeah, you're getting here. It's great. It always tells you all the stuff. Good seeing you too. I'll, I'll be back here. I'll be back here. Oh, okay. You can hang out here if you have yeah, that. Yeah, it looks like you'll be able to see the presentation and have lights on. So that's good. Well, it's the people that are looking in for the people to see. It's just, it's just. Yeah, and they were behind there. No, but also the people. Oh yes. Oh yeah. And the zoomers. Yep. Zoomers. 
So yeah, they can see the presentation live on the, on the Zoom. Okay. So, so whenever you're ready, I will start. Yeah, we're ready. Go ahead. Um, good evening. I'm very pleased that we have um, Sam Gold from the Lower Connecticut River Valley um, Club, and he's going to present the Connecticut River Valley Plan of Conservation and Development presentation to planning and zoning and to also people that are on Zoom about the visions that we should be looking at for a regional plan of conservation and development. Great. Well, well, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, it's good to see you again. We miss you at the RPC, and uh, thank you, members of the Commission and other guests. Um, uh, as uh, Alice just introduced me, I'm Sam Gold. I'm the Executive Director of the Lower Connecticut River Valley Council of Governments, also known as RiverCog. And joining me on the Zoom call, which we're trying a hybrid meeting here, is uh, Megan Jufus, our senior planner, um, who actually joined us back in February. So Alice, you haven't met, met her yet, but you barely met her because uh, went uh, to remote working. But anyway, um, so uh, I also like to acknowledge, acknowledge uh, Chris, who um, who I, I, and I, and also Nicholas for serving on the RPC. Uh, they've been your um, uh, Nicholas is new. He will be a representative, and Chris has been a representative. So thank you very much for serving to the regional planning committee. And we'd like to begin this meeting with a brief presentation, followed by an open discussion based on five discussion questions uh, that were circulated prior to the meeting. Everyone but the presenters. Um, on, at least on the Zoom, because this is actually our first in-person version of this, uh, will be muted. Um, we, I will bring a microphone over to the computer for them to be able to speak to the commission when we get to that portion of the presentation. Um, and we expect us to be about an hour, maybe a little less. So, all right. So why are we here? Let's see if this will work. Just one second. All right, why are we here? Well, um, so as a, as a reminder, River Cog, the Regional Planning Committee, and our consultant, Ms. Jalton Halliday, are working on the first regional plan of conservation development for the Lower Connecticut River Valley region. On June 29th and July 7th, we held region-wide introductory presentations on this project. Um, if, you have, if you didn't attend those introductions, oh, the video of them are actually, is on our website, which is uh, rivercogregionalplan.org. And we are going to do a brief recap of that presentation to get you up to speed with what we're doing and where we are on the project. Um, and and uh, let's go, uh, go back to uh, the presentation is uh, we will spend a few minutes explaining uh, what we mean by region and why we think regionally. Uh, the purpose of this discussion is to focus on your perspective. Although we, can, we, are, we are here to learn about your town's issues and goals, it's important to keep in mind that we are creating a regional plan. Uh, so our focus should be on how your town's issues uh, and goals fit into the region as a whole. We will highlight some examples of this by showcasing a few goals from your POCD and comparing them to goals in other towns across the region. Uh, then we will turn the rest of this meeting over to you uh, and discuss your responses to the five questions that were circulated before the meeting. So these are uh, so at the introductory presentation back in July. We set out to answer a few key questions, which I will briefly read. Why are we here? Uh, as I mentioned at the onset, uh, we are creating the first regional plan of conservation development at the Lower Connecticut River Valley. What is Rivercock? Uh, River Cod is a regional planning organization for the Lower Connecticut River Valley. Uh, what is the RPC? The RPC is, is made up of appointed representatives from each of our 17 towns in the region, uh, and they've been tasked uh, with this project of creating the regional plan. And what is a regional plan of conservation development? It is a visionary policy document uh, that guides land use patterns in the region over the next 10 years. Also at the introductory presentation, we answer the question of why we think regionally. 
because thinking as a region can help our municipalities solve common problems and achieve common goals. But what do we mean by region? Specifically, we're talking about the lower Connecticut River Valley, which is made up of 17 municipalities, uh, Chester, Clinton, Cromwell, Deep River, Durham, East Haddam, East Hampton, Essex, Haddam, Killingworth, Lyme, Middlefield, Middletown, Old Lyme, Old Saybrook, Portland, and Westbrook. Each of these municipalities is unique in character, but their geographic proximity means that uh, certain common conditions uh, will exist among them and that certain issues and goals will ne necessarily be shared. In addition, many issues and goals will have impact across municipal boundaries. What happens in Cromwell uh, could have an impact that reaches Portland. The unique character of each municipality also means that each town has its own strengths and weaknesses. Our municipalities are interdependent, relying on each other in areas of housing, jobs, infrastructure, and critical public services. As part of the RPOCD, we will be examining these common issues and goals, as well as areas where our towns are interdependent and provide a roadmap for coordination and cooperation. As part of this effort, hearing from you about what matters to your city is critically important. Although this is the first regional plan of conservation development for the Lower Connecticut River Valley region, it is important to reiterate that we're not starting from zero. Our analysis of common issues and goals began with a review of municipal POCDs for all 17 municipalities. After our review, we compared the POCDs and found that they do in fact share a great deal in common. Let's uh, take a look at some of the goals from Cromwell's most recent POCD. First, I'd like to note that these goals were chosen to showcase the breadth of topics covered, in the, uh, covered and were not meant to imply any level of importance, uh, just the connections between different towns. One, promote the development of interconnected system of parks, trails, and open spaces. Two, promote tourism as an avenue for economic development in the town. Three, provide housing opportunities while protecting the character of our communities. And, and, um, and four, promote a variety of transportation options, including train, bus, car, bicycle, and walking as part of, the, of Cromwell's circulation system. These goals are widely shared. Um, all 17 towns had goals uh, related to establishing and linking open space and greenways. 16 had a goal related to tourism and recreation. 17 had goals related to diversifying housing stock. 17 had goals related to improving bicycle and pedestrian connections. So, so when we look across the, across the region, we look at the POCDs, there's, there's commonalities across all the towns. And, and, there's, and, there's, and there's very distinct differences between towns. We are really starting at the beginning here. We want, we're going to each one of our towns to sort of learn from you as to what you think makes Cromwell special, what you think the role of the town should be in the region, and how that working together across town lines could help your town realize its own goals and address uh, issues that you're facing. So, so we reviewed your plan and all of your neighbors' plans. Uh, we have we have uh, reviewed data from the census and other sources, and we and using our own professional experience, like we can make assessments. But you live in Cromwell, you you know your town best, and and I was just chatting with Alice before this meeting about this. I Rivercock staff and our consultant Sheldon Holiday will be working on this plan, but we need to hear from you as to what's important. Like this plan needs to focus on certain visionary goals. It needs to focus on areas where our towns really need to work together. And we wanna make a document at the end of the process that's useful to you as a commission. So we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna start the conversation. Uh, we will make time um, 
uh, after each question for people on Zoom uh, to make any comments if they have any. So, and we'd like to keep discussion on this to the most 10 minutes to say, to sort of be respectful of your time. Um, also at the bottom of each slide is Megan Jufless, um, her email address. So if you have any comments that you want to make after this presentation, or if you're watching this recording later, you can always email Megan with your comments and your ideas. So let's start off with the first question. So uh, Cromwell sits at the top of the Lower Connecticut River Valley region. It's sort of, it's a suburb of Middletown, but it's also a suburb of the greater Hartford area. So your region really spans two geographic regions of the state, whether it be the capital region of Hartford and also Middlesex County, Middletown. What do you see this region or this portion of the state, which, which does admittedly uh, go into your neighbors north, what, what, what's your vision here? If you were to go somewhere else in the world, someone, uh, somewhere that no one had ever heard of, Connecticut or, or Cromwell, what would you want to explain to that person as the place that you live in? And what would you want to be able to say about that place? And I know these are very visionary questions, but these are the types of ideas that we want to get, get into in this plan. So I'll open up to any commissioners who want to speak on that. Yeah. The vision of Cromwell is that Cromwell is central. We are by the state capitol. We're only like 25 minutes, depending on traffic, up to Hartford. And then we're about 35 minutes or 40 minutes to New Haven. So for us, we are between the two, I think, big cosmopolitan centers in Connecticut, New Haven and also to Hartford. So we're kind of uniquely positioned as far as, you know, being attractive to people who want to live in a, a more progressive town, but still kind of have a small type of a town atmosphere, and yet they're not so far away from the cosmopolitan centers. So that's how I would look at for Cromwell, that we are, you know, we're not like, uh, we're at kind of a small town, but we're not because we're growing. And so we used to be called the rural, you know, after the cows came to people. And so we're no longer the farmland. We're no longer the agricultural um, situation that we were in with Tobacco Valley and things like that. And with a lot of farms and where ShopRite is, that used to be the paddock farm with cows in it. Now we are more, you know, more with the urbanization. Right. Uh, someone else? I think one of our greatest assets certainly is we're on the river. So we've been trying to capitalize on that for a lot of years. And we all have great ideas. And Alice and Megan had a um, spirited discussion the other day <laughs> and um, about how and when it's going to be developed. You know, we've been talking about it forever. But another great asset, as I'll, I'll call it, is I'll reiterate what Alice said, and that is our, our central location. And um, certainly now because of COVID, life has changed um, in regards to, um, to business in the city. So, so, so people want to move to the suburbs now. They want to, let's say, flee the cities. So now I think it's more important that we're there to attract uh, uh, different businesses or, or, or whomever. Thank you. And it seems like you could sort of like ex extrapolate that centrality um, to northern Middlesex County. And that's one of the benefits of this part of the state is that we are in the middle, uh, uh, in the middle between uh, New Haven and Hartford, but also in the middle between east and west. Boston and New York. Yeah. So any other ideas of you know, your visions for this part of the world? Of you know, what, the way it is now or the way you'd wanted us to capitalize on this, on this place? And we can always come back if you have ideas. And, what, and over the course of this discussion, we've noticed that people usually come up with ideas later on. So don't worry if we answer the questions out of order. We're taking notes. Uh, we are recording this. And so, uh, so we will have this recording to be able to refer to. If 
I saw so Nicholas. A little bit departing from, from the discussion so far, but from a regional perspective, uh, you know, we may be able to take advantage of us being in the northern part of the region, but as transportation through, through maybe not just the river, but transportation through the region, some kind of way of unifying the region in a mobility type of uh, an environment, um, maybe looking at uh, the, the, the topology for network connectivity as well, unifying the regions where some of the more rural regions don't have the expanse of the internet. I know that's not part of what we do, but the thought of being able to 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 conduct you know, regional activities through some type of a network topology is, is something that may be of, of interest. And um, you know, the storm recovery, you know, electrical grid. How do we count on each other from as neighbors to something happens to some part of our town, especially the coastal, you know, it's our, or, or a hurricane or some weather, 100 year flood, it's one area. How can we be regionally working together to help one town? Because one day you'll need my help and the other day I'll need yours. So those kind of things would be where I'd like to see some of our vision go as far as connectivity of towns, how we connect, not just, you know, from a physical perspective, but from a technology perspective. But connectivity for the, uh, for internet, Connectivity for emergency response, connectivity, connectivity, for, connectivity transportation, for transportation network, getting, transit. Yeah, coming up to Cromwell from the shore, from the shore right. of Clinton to the wonderful outlets there, you know, <laughs> those kind of things. That, that, that's, that's a great vision. So, um, uh, I'm going to turn over to Megan to see if she has anything online, if anyone in the Zoom meeting has any comments. Not Let's see, seen. just one second. I just need to un unmute. Just one second. Oh, there's Megan. There's Megan, but I don't know if we can hear her. Can you hear me? All right. All right. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, so Megan, is there any comments online? Um, let's see. Yes, we have. Uh, we cannot hear you. Let's see. Just one second. Doesn't she have to unmute herself? She unmute, she's not muted. No, so can, try speaking now, Megan. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yay. 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 <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, I don't see anyone. See you. <laughs> uh, no hands raised on okay. Zoom. So, great. Well, so I guess we can continue on if, if any of the commissioners have other questions. Oh, there's Anthony LaCava. And you can say hello if you'd like. I'm here. I was just blank before. Okay. I am participating. Great. Well, thank you. No, no questions at this time from me. So any, uh, anyone else on the idea of vision for the region? And, and, I, and I want to tell you that how we're using this information. Uh, so this is, um, you are the 16th of 17 towns that we've met with. Uh, so we have one more, which is East Haddam next week. And so we will be creating a summary of everything we've heard from all the land use commissions in the region uh, and other participants who have joined in those meetings. And what's really interesting about this process is we're hearing it from all different angles. We're hearing, we're hearing from towns on the shoreline, we're hearing from towns in a river. And, and, we're, and the plan here is to take all that input and use that to shape how this document uh, you know, will, be, will be sort of framed and sort of created. And to make sure that we focus on the items that are important to our towns and also sort of uh, be able to weave the common themes that we hear throughout this whole process. All right, so I'm going to go to the next question. All right, what do you see as Cromwell's role in the region? We talked about centrality, its uh, development as a suburb um, from a rural town, but other other ideas you have for its role. And I, I, can, I can tell you what I think your role is, and I think you, you probably could tell me a lot too. I want to hear what you got to say. So what role do you play for your neighboring communities? Can I speak? Yes, of course. So, so Cromwell, thank you very much, thank you. So Cromwell is, is you know, a, a retail center. You know, Cromwell contains the 15th largest shopping center in the state of Connecticut, 
with the ShopRite Shopping Center. Um, you know, so we're we're a retail magnet for other towns. People come up Route Nine, they get off Route Nine to go to ShopRite to stop and shop for Lowe's. Um, you know, they also come here to go to our restaurants. Um, they come here for some of our service facilities, our automotive uses, things like that. Um, so we're we're kind of a retail and a service center for the rest of the region. And as as the other commission members pointed out earlier, you know, we're we're at the crossroads. You know, as you pointed out, this part of the region is is in the middle of the state, and that's what a lot of Cromwell's appeal is of other people. I mean, that's why the Amazon facility came to Cromwell. That's why the safe glass people came to Cromwell. They came here a couple of years ago and they said, well, you know, we can be in Cromwell. They're right next to the highway on Sabethi. They can be anywhere in the state in under an hour. So you know, that's why they're in Cromwell. So, so we provide, given our, our geographic location, we provide, you know, as, as it said, you know, a retail, retail center, service center, and we're just like kind of at the crossroads. So that's what we like to say about Cromwell. Cromwell is the crossroads of Connecticut. So I, I think it's we're a, an asset to the rest of the, the region in that sense, um, with probably the exception of Middletown. And then until you get down to Old Lyme and you're down there, we probably have the largest amount of retail available and the services available mm -hmm. to people within the region. I don't know how does that sound to everybody else? Great. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think Cromwell residents have the ability to, in 15 minutes or less, be in any one of three cities around us, and yet we can go out at 9 o'clock at night and walk our dog, mm -hmm. and we have a level of safety in Cromwell that oftentimes is not afforded the residents of the cities that we're able to be in in 15 minutes and home again. So, from a safety and security standpoint at this point in Cromwell's history, I think we're a pretty safe place to be. I'll also point out that you're home to a lot of people and this is uh, and it's a very uh, and for you know this region which is, has a lot of small towns you have a you have a, a one of the higher populations so you're also home to a lot of people as well. So. Add a comment? Uh, go ahead. Um, just one other thing that we have, we have obviously a lot of uh, sports in Connecticut, I mean in Cromwell, between the TPC, uh, the hockey rink, and other things that we offer. So not only being um, a hub for, for, uh, for commercial and um, retail, but also for uh, boarding activities as well. Yeah, thank you. That's, a, that's, a, that's an excellent comment for when it comes to recreation. That is a unique role that Cromwell plays, not only for uh, for our region, but also for the state, for the PGA Tour, who come, who, who usually comes here most years. Uh, uh, well, actually, no, it, it, it did happen. Yeah, it did happen. Yeah. 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 Yes. But yeah. also, we have um, a big um, state park here, too, where yep. a lot of people are down by the river where they can go walking, and it's called the Highland State Park. And um, But also, for the Matabasset, there are also walking trails on the Matabasset River that, you know, is going to be, I think, in the future, more will be done with those trails because that's all open space. That's great. Yeah, that recreation comment is really good. Thank you, Thank you Anthony. So, uh, I don't know if there's any other comments on, you know, the role of Cromwell in the larger region. All right, if not, I will move on. What are the challenges your town is facing that would be easier to address working regionally or if you're neighboring towns? You know, Cromwell already works regionally on many things. Um, you know, you got the Matabasset district. You have, uh, you have your, your, an active member of the COG. You uh, participate in mutual aid agreements with your neighbors. Um, but what are, what, what are some things where, that you see as um, you know, challenges that you're facing, you know, that now, obviously, you have to address individually because that's that's the level of government that we're dealing with. But would be best if if you if your neighbors were cooperating with you. And we and we understand these are big picture questions. Um, I think as as adjoining towns are seeing a decrease in their overall school populations, 
a, a sharing of educational facilities, regionalization of high schools, middle schools, grammar schools, um, rather than every town having their own. I'd love to see our school system regionalized more, um, take the burden off the taxpayers of Cromwell as well as adjoining towns. All right, um, school, school regionalization. All right. Well, there's one one issue that not too many people know, but we own we actually share some heavy equipment. Oh. The amount of work. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think looking at some of those issues regionally, you know, not everybody needs you know, you know, things like a very large backhoe system sitting in the garage every day, mm -hmm. and it's only yep. used a certain amount of time during the year, and equipment like that um, is very expensive to own and maintain. And it could definitely, that's why we share some of the equipment, one piece of equipment that I know is in our port. So that's a good example. Yeah, there may be services, I think, that, that, and I'm not familiar with all the town sharing agreements, but services regionally that you could, uh, whether it be waste disposal, mm -hmm. snow, state inter interconnected recreational facilities, those types of things, the maintenance of them, that if you could share those types of services, mm -hmm. it lowers the cost for everybody. Overall. Yeah, the snow one is very interesting. Um, one of the other COGs in the state, uh, what the Western Connecticut COG, actually recently did a study on snow plow routes and how they can be optimized and how you potentially share and, and plow roads more efficiently and cheaper um, with potentially less equipment. So, yeah, so that's, that's an interesting one. Yeah, and I don't know if economic development in another area where, you know, interlinking that. I think you alluded to it a little bit, but but interlinking those types of economic development yeah. projects so that we help each other in advertising each other's assets so we keep people in our region, right? And yeah. Traveling within our region. And, and it's and it's very obvious that you know you have different towns with different goals, mm -hmm. uh, and you have and you have different towns that have different uh, infrastructure. You know, uh, you have sewer and water for a lot of the town. A lot of the other towns don't, uh, or they have limit uh, they have limited capacity. So if there could be, you know, sort of the region working together saying, okay, the rural areas will stay rural and the areas where we already have the infrastructure is maybe that's where that development belongs. Um, so, uh, but, but also the idea of, um, of working together on economic development is a good one. We have a very robust uh, chamber of commerce, uh, who, who, um, uh, which is actually, I think the largest chamber in the state, uh, the Middlesex Chamber. And so that's an example of how some of our towns are really working together through the chamber. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of creative opportunities too. I mean, you have Adam, uh, you have the shore, which has their their uh, yeah, um, their theater sound. Oh, uh, the cage. Well, and yeah, yeah. 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 So, so there's a lot of, of that artistic stuff that, that's available. They go down to Mystic, they have the Mystic, um, the Seaport, but also they have their own community theaters. It's a community theater network that could be integrated as well. It's part of the Okay, go ahead. Oh, sure. Um, so, oh, yeah. Hi, um, thank you for letting me Is it okay, Alice, if I say something? Yeah, okay, yeah. so why don't you come around so we can see you? A couple of thoughts I had. Let's step on a chair or something. <laughs> um, a couple of the thoughts that I had. Um, so one challenge that I think we're, we're facing is I noticed in the last town council budget cycle, our tipping fees continue to go up as we're having a huge trash disposal recycling problem and if we can come up with a regional approach to uh, reuse, reduce, reuse, reduce and recycle uh, and try to find a more efficient way of getting rid of our waste, I think that's going to be a huge problem in the next, next decade uh, that hasn't come to roost yet but it's going to. So that's one thing that I think is a huge challenge. Um, and then as far as um, to my dad's point, you know, that, that is my father, so <laughs> I, I take some ownership for him where he gets the other way around. Um, I'm sure that I'm you know, I, I'm very, uh, I'm an avid museum goer and an avid arts, uh, I mean, can't paint or do anything, or can't do any type of art to save my life, but I like creative people and I enjoy them. But you have the Good Speed Opera House, you have Old St. Works Art Collective, you have the Old Lime, um, two art museums in Old Lime that are both beautiful. You have the Connecticut River Museum, um, Griswold. the Griswold Museum. You have a, a network of uh, institutions that are very unique. And you know, I always hear people talk about the Hudson River Valley as this really gray area. I think the Connecticut River Valley can be 
uh, that kind of great idea. I know it doesn't go to the challenges, but I was just no, thinking about that. Great. But I, I do think, though, James, that that does, because I think that if the towns work together on the arts thing and really promote it, the different museums out to a lot of people, like what the Hudson Valley does, yep. that that's how you would have people that would know about these things. Because if you live in a town, you know about it. But if you don't live in a town, you really don't know about all of these little museums and things like this, the civil theater companies that offer a lot of productions because well, you know, you used to be able to go. And, and, you will be able to go eventually. And I'll point out the obvious, and maybe this is more in the role, is that you actually have the capacity for, for housing uh, tourists in, in hotels. Like, we don't have uh, many large hotels in this region. Uh, Cromwell has that capacity. Uh, and so that's something which, um, uh, you know, there, you don't, and there's reasons why you don't have a large hotel in Haddam, it's because they don't have sewer. You know that the hotels um, the hotels are difficult to uh, to sort of accommodate without that infrastructure. So, but I think that I think that if towns got together and looked at and just said it's okay if we're going to have like a some type of an artist come in and all, and then really broadcast it so that even if, as you said, they didn't have a place that somebody could stay, but Cromwell isn't that far away. No, it isn't. And you know, so but working together in some type of a unified, you know. Extravaganza. Yeah, and one area where a challenge I'm, I, I am happy to report is um, that we're very involved in is with your uh, with the transit district, Middleton Area Transit, which uh, Cromwell will receive service uh, from. Uh, that is something which you know the individual towns really you know need to work together to provide public transportation. That's not something that can really work efficiently on individual towns providing it. So, but even on that point, though, because I know I see that little bus come around. Yep. But I don't know how many people in Carmel know about this bus, mm -hmm. know about what services, where you can get it, how often you can get it, because it's really not, you know, maybe you have to put it in and, newspapers and, or something just to say is that, did you know that you can get bus service from Carmel to Middletown and, uh, you know. And I think that, and that will speak to our next question, which is one of the things where we can, areas where we can do better. So I'm going to chalk that up to area that we can I'm do better sorry. in. No, 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 don't worry about that, that's great. Uh, but before we leave this question, does anyone out on the Zoom want to make any more comments? Uh, if not, we'll move to number four. All right, we can always go back. All right, what do we do well in our region? What can we do better? So, uh, so we, we'll start that with transit, um, promoting the transit services we have. You know, if they're very skeletal, but they do, we do have them. And and they could be put uh, to better use uh, by residents of Cromwell, but also residents of other towns looking to come to Cromwell to go shop and go and work. So it goes both directions. Right, and if, you know, because I grew up at a time where you had a bus every 15 minutes. Yeah. Right. As I grew up in the, the big city of Hartford. I mean, you know, so, right. I mean, you didn't have a car. I mean, because you had bus transportation or you walked. Whereas today, everybody, myself included, hops in their car rather than looking at public transportation, just because it was so intimate, you know, you might get it two hours later or something, and you had to plan your day with it. So that might be an area that I think not only for towns to do, but I think also the state needs to really take a look at and say is, you know, we really need to upgrade our transportation and, you know, grab, I don't know how that fast track is doing. I haven't heard anything in the in the news about it, but of course well, with COVID, nobody goes anywhere. Well, but but one idea I always had for fast track was why, why you know, uh, New Britain is not far from here, um, but there but there's no but it's not, but if you want to go from Cromwell to New Britain, you have to go to downtown Hartford and back out. Yeah. Why couldn't there be a, a, a one of the routes of fast fast track south that would follow Route Nine, eight stops along the way, maybe terminated in uh, in Middletown. But serve those towns. So let's say you, you wanted to take class at CCSU, you could, um, or if you needed to get to the Yukon Medical Center. So you know, those those are ideas that we've sort of floated around with the state. Is like, you know, you've invested all this money on fast track. Why not serve the town south of New Britain? So, all right. Other ideas of what we do well in our region and what can we do better. I I will bring back the issue of. Uh, 
internet connectivity uh, in our networks. Um, you know, our topography here is not very conducive to cellular service. Um, we have a number of areas where you cannot get cellular service, and that is not acceptable in today's business climate. If you don't have uh, a cellular connection, you might as well, you, you're not you're nowhere. So that, that's an area which uh, has become very clear as a deficit that we need to deal with. And the same thing with high speed internet access. Um, Comcast and Frontier have not uh, performed all that well in the last storm, along with CLP or fiber sources. So, uh, so does that, does that, does having a regional approach to that give us more opportunity to improve all those things? Well, that's what we're trying. Um, uh, we are lucky in our region that the first selectman of Essex is also a state senator, is on that, uh, is, a, is on that committee of the General Assembly. So he's taken on uh, the issues regarding uh, Eversource and the lack of preparation for the storms. Um, but one item I'll, I'll bring up to you that has been identified is, is we're dealing with a major die-off of trees uh, from the basic species. Um, we have the emerald ash borer killing our ash trees. There's you know, the long-standing gypsy moth issue that we think worse by, by drought. Um, and those trees are coming down in the towns. Can't cut them down fast enough. Uh, and when a big storm comes by, things uh, the trees come down, knock out car lines, knock out cars, unfortunately, also land on people occasionally. Um, and that's something I think that's going to be best addressed regionally is something that we can do better. Whether it be getting equipment to deal with that issue, whether it be uh, training of our public works, they will deal uh, with how you move trees around electrical infrastructure. Um, will ever source train a public works to be able to do that work or do more work? Um, those are all areas where I think we could probably address. Well, I have to comment on that because sure. I did work for Eversource. Yeah. And let me tell you, you go to cut somebody's tree down, and they are out with their hair on fire. <laughs> so you can't always blame Eversource. Right. Because they would come around, you do not touch my tree, even though it was this gigantic thing with broken branches and all. And so finally, they, had, they just went out and they started cutting them down. And people had their hair on fire. Yep. That these beautiful trees that, you know, now it looks like as if the place is naked. But that is another thing that people really and truly need to be educated as far as when trees need to say goodbye and, and burning your fire. And that person's, uh, you know, hair on fire issues affect everyone else on that street and, on, right. that, and on that circuit. Mm -hmm. So, Are we able to um, get more services underground, like with uh, wire and stuff like that? I mean, do we as a Cromwell have more of an infrastructure? You probably can't do that in Essex or Santa where it's um, much more rural, but... I, I assume in your subdivision regulations, you do have that, right. correct? Yeah. Yes, like, correct. Like I know Cromwell yeah. Hills is some of the condo companies, they're able, they're able to do that differently. Yes. And, um, right, be simply because yeah. that they have the developer and they picked yeah. all that up. But again, because we are in, we used to have these terrible winters, yeah. and what a lot of people don't understand is that it sounds good that you put everything underground. Yeah, now, one, if a wire that. goes on fire underground yeah. in the middle of two above zero, yeah. now it's a big problem for it because you got to get a jackhammer out. Okay. And so it isn't the same thing. Like when you're down in Florida, you don't have to worry about sub zero weather. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I, and I know in Europe, even in the coldest regions, they do it. But before that, we, you know, they didn't put it underground. And also, when you put it underground, you got to get rid of the trees with their roots. Okay. And it's expensive. It's Very expensive. expensive. And, and that's the main reason. Like, uh, we're an old state. Uh, most of our, you know, housing was built, you know, um, you know pre-war, pre-World War II. So, you know, 1700. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so retrofitting to put the wires underground is a, is a difficult and expensive yeah. thing. It's not impossible. Um, it, it, it can be done. It's just something which, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that, places are under. that Eversource is not going to pick that up and make the repairs for the board. So it, but it, is, it is an issue. But the issues of trees is a regional issue. What, where do you dispose of that waste? How do you get rid of them? How do you get the crews to be able to deal with these issues before the storm to try to protect people's property, people's lives? And how do you get the people to agree? Yep, that's the other issue.
Do we have emergency services agreements with different towns to help you? Yes, uh, yes. yes we do. Um, so Cromwell uh, participates with um, Middlesex Hospital with their paramedic service. So that's a shared regional service. Uh, we do, there is shared communication infrastructure between uh, uh, the various emergency services as well. Um, Cromwell is, has its own 911 piece app. So that is something which uh, Cromwell is, is, is independent on, but it's something the state is very interested in. Um, your town manager has very, uh, very strong opinions on what the state wants to do, and mm -hmm. I, I, I have some in, in, opinions as well. But they, but that's one that's something that they're sort of pushing on everyone who's so independent. But um, any any other ideas of things that you know if we think we do well together and things that we can do better? Do you monopolize? Mm. How do you how do you expect cooperation from other source yeah. when they're the only show in town? How do you expect cooperation yeah. from Comcast, Comcast when they're the only show in town? Yeah. How do you expect cooperation from Frontier when they're the only show in town? I mean. You know, we did it to ourselves. Yeah, and the show we, we allowed it to happen. Yeah. And, that. and what and what I'll say about what we can do better and what we can do uh, what we can do well is, I think after the storms at the beginning of the last decade, you know, Superstorm Sandy and Irene and and those storms in the beginning of the, of the teens, um, we learned a lot from those. And and EverSource and Salem we made major improvements on how they do storm response. It seems like there's been a turnover in institutional knowledge. At Eversource, maybe as part of the merger, um, but the storms were, um, you know, it, it didn't play out as well. This, uh, this, the tropical storm from last month. So. Right. Well, the problem is, if you really want to get down yeah. to the nuts and bolts of it, is it's all shareholders. Mm -hmm. It is the, it is how much money can we make for the shareholders? That isn't how it used to be. When I worked at Northeast Utilities, it was not the shareholders; it was the utmost thing. They, it was the customer service. And that's how you ha you had your crews there and all. And then when the merger came through with um, from Boston area, yeah, Energy Star, yeah. Energy Star, yeah. And that changed the whole thing because now what it is is that they got they outsourced everybody. They went to the India, they went to Texas and things like this. So it's really our regulatory people that really and truly has now made our utility what it is today, and it is just, it's not like it used to be. I mean, it, they, they brought it down to be a skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. If you take a look out and you see them at the wires, you don't see Eversource. You see some of uh, Aspen. They used to only just cut trees. Now they're putting up wires. And they change the bolts, yeah. Right. And, so, and look at the license plates. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But I'm just saying is so that our our um, regulators did not do service to Connecticut yeah. when they allowed the merger to come through and the way that it came through. Yeah. Have we looked at, uh, you know, like Wallingford has their own power? Yeah. Have we looked at, at, at consolidating right. power? power? So I, I got this question a number of times in the like. And they asked, like, well, how did uh, Norwich and how did Wallingford forget their own power plants? Well, they always they always had their own power plants. Right. Mm -hmm. And so because they always had, they do, the the, the idea of having municipalities buy out Eversource and run their own electric company, I, I don't think you could bond enough to be able to do yeah. that, quite honestly. And then you would probably still have to contract with a company like that yeah. to, in order to run the uh, run, run the electric company. So but these ideas have come up because of this issue. So, oh. can I ask a question? Sure. Um, maybe something to consider when you know what we can do better is is using regional buying power mm -hmm. when we're negotiating with a Comcast or an EverSource or any regional service. Um, now that could be difficult because sometimes it's hard to make all the clocks chime at the same time. But uh, I do think with certain things, maybe having a regional approach to it, whether it's waste management or power or utilities or cable or internet you know it grows our buying power and our buying share especially given the, the, the fact that a lot of the municipalities in the cog are, are more rural in nature I, I don't get it though if, if ever source is the only one supplying power or i should say the only one that has the distribution network who are you going to buy from yeah so if you can buy from the supplier the suppliers that's are independent different. that's different we can but, all buy from suppliers 
it cannot change our distribution issue. And the distribution issue was what everybody just got hammered on. And it's the majority of our bills. Yeah. Correct. And that's my point. So, yeah, so yeah. get kids' towns together. It doesn't matter. Eversource owns the poles and the wires, and they control the distribution show. Yeah. That's my point. You, you need to demonopolize Eversource, Comcast, Frontier, etc. And I don't know how you can do that. I don't care if you get 100 towns together. And I think this is going to be the topic of the special session that's coming up in a, in a week or two at the General Assembly. So, uh, yeah. But I would also add, you know, just say it's okay. So you demobilize the PR, monopolize. Okay. So what happens? So you, you become a company, I become a company, and you become a company. So he can buy it from you, he can buy it from me, then he gets mad at you when he comes to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying yeah. is that, you know, when you were talking about electricity, it's very different because for the grids and things like this, then who's going to take care of it? And that was a big talk about who is going to come out when you were buying from a different supplier and take care of something happened to your electricity coming through. So it's not just, you know, and to have 10, 10 different companies. You have to have 10 different companies being fully equipped. Right now, the technology doesn't allow it. I agree with you. But 25 years from now, we may be looking at a completely different situation where you can buy from whomever you want, and they are going to have a way to deliver it to you however they want. And the technology is evolving so quickly. Oh, yeah. So, and, you know, and, we're talking now, but 25 years from now, this may be a moot point. Mm -hmm. You so, may be able to buy it from whoever you want. So before I you go on, agree, the, is that came from the, the manual pipeline. There you so, go. Uh, so just uh, about the issue of trash, I'll just quickly you know that uh, that uh, Mira, which is the former CRA that operates the waste energy plant in, Middle in Hartford, that is on its last legs, we are facing a trash, um, uh, impending trash disaster, where we're going to be shipping a lot of trash um, uh, in trucks out of state, and uh, and the landfills in, in Pennsylvania are starting to get full. And so you start talking about shipping it out to Ohio and further west. Further you get the truck, it the more expensive we'll get. So we do have an impending trash issue, which uh, which I'll, I will assure you that the, that the town managers and first selectmen are very aware of. Um, and so, uh, Chris, uh, I believe the trash yeah. issue started when they went to single street. They had the recycling down pretty good about 20 years ago when they used to take the, they used to separate everything. Then they were able to recycle and sell. So then costs probably got in the way of thinking. And they went to single stream, contaminating everything, and now nobody wants nobody wants to buy it and get recycled. Mm -hmm. More in the landfills. So if they went back to the original design, they wouldn't have to keep going up on the tipping fees. They can sell this stuff. They can't right. sell it anymore. I believe that's one of the issues. Who are they going to sell it to? Well, now single stream is really trash. No, I know, but I think that there's just so much and stuff. That goes into the landfills. No, but I just think stuff. that when you take a look at um, the throwaway society that we've become, we, you know, I mean, there's just so, who's going to buy all this stuff? What are you going to do with it? The plastic, and, and, and they should get rid of plastic. It's a little bit of a tangent, but I'll just say that the, the concept that Rivercock is working with as a partner with Deep is the idea of product storage chips. So, for example, when you buy a mattress now in Connecticut, uh, there's a fee that goes towards the disposal of those mattresses because otherwise the towns, the towns who pay for it, were burdened with these large bulky items that had to be collected on the side of the road um, mm -hmm. or dumped somewhere if, if they're not being, uh, you know, uh, disposed of properly. So, um, so the idea of you know, when you purchase it, you're paying for its full life cycle cost. And I think that's a model which uh, we've seen for a number of things with car batteries, um, with paint, that now instead of having the town pay for the disposal of paint uh, through the hazardous waste program, uh, that is uh, actually the paint is, uh, you can bring back the, the paint store because that those costs are covered. And how you do it with just packaging material and some of that stuff, a little bit more complicated, but uh, but the way it's done in Europe is that the packaging producers, you know, pay a fee for the cost of disposing of their packaging that they're selling. From uh, beginning to end. From beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And then that money, instead of coming out of the, out of the tip, uh, being the tipping fee 
or coming out of the town budget, depending on the town, you know, uh, that you know is covered by it from the sale price of that of that commodity. And then you know, then there's a financial incentive to create reusable items or or create products or packaging that just have less volume and less 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 waste. So, all right, I want to get to the last question. And so I, uh, I don't know if we have any questions online or right, comments, and if not, we'll just move on to number five. But speak up if you do. All right. How could a regional plan of conservation development support problem? So, you know, we're writing this document. Um, I'll tell you how uh, how this document could help your town. Uh, having a regional plan with identified strategies and goals will definitely help your town applying for grants. Uh, will definitely help with you know advocating for the scarce resources at the state level to say, look, we're implementing our plan which is a bigger vision for our region. So that's one way to help you. But we also want this document to help you in your, you know, your day in day out business in the town hall. Um, you know, backing up things that you find important enough to put in your POCD. We read your plan, um, so we want to back you up on that. But you know, we want to make sure that this is useful. You know, because you know, this is a visionary document, it's uh, advisory. Um, the PNZs, you know, don't have to follow it, but we want them to, and they have some ownership here. So, you know, any ideas of how this document could be most useful to you and your work? And, and it's also, I will admit that this is the first regional plan that we've created for this region, so it's, it's, a doc, it's something you don't have yet. I think that probably the way that it was do well is because it's regional, so that instead of getting the plan from Durham, the plan from Bromo, the plan from Essex and things like this. You have something that has incorporated many of the ideas, many of the um, things that each town can do, would hope to do, into one document. So then you can kind of see how close you are to having the same type of uh, interests, the same type of concerns, or how you're going to package your town so that, you know, people from Essex who want to come to Cromwell, people from Cromwell who want to go, I'm just using Essex, yes. just because they could read about in here, this is all, you know, the things that are offered there. So I think that maybe that, in that way, it's more of a document talking about Middlesex County from the top to the bottom, yep. and just then having a place that you can go and kind of look through it. Because everybody has their own plan. Mm -hmm. And at least in this way, you probably take the most important things out of each area and put them into the regional plan and have like an overall view of what is called the Middlesex County or the River Valley. Yep. And, and shared, that, shared goals yeah. and objectives. Yeah. Is, is what you know, I think Alice is alluding to and how those mm -hmm. could help the towns. Like for example, uh, tying together different, uh, um, different riverfront type activities, how we can link those together where you can go from town to town to town and have different things to do in each town through the river, right? And, and establishing riverfronts or shared goals and how those conservation goals or open space goals can be shared through town so that we're all kind of doing things the same way and maybe be able to share ideas, thoughts, and resources on how we do those things. So. Yeah, like one, one thing which like ties almost all the towns together is a connected river. Which is uh, which is the biggest river in New England? It is the probably it's the, it's the defining natural resource of the state. Mm -hmm. The state's named after it, yeah. uh, and uh, and so yeah, I think that's a big one. And one thing that we um, oh, have been working on for a very long time is uh, some of the invasive species. We have a couple of plants um, that uh, uh, invasive uh, chestnut, water chestnut, uh, hydrilla that really a, a single town can't address in the river. Because you know, a cutting floats down from uh, from another town, plants itself in one of uh, along your your river banks. It, it doesn't help if you rip it all out. You all have to work on it together. So that's something that uh, we're already working on. But I think it's a big thing, which you know, keeping the river healthy and beautiful and an asset to all the towns. And uh, and also, um, um, I'll point out that one of the, one of the important elements of the regional plan will be a future land use map. Uh, it will not be as detailed as the map you have in your POCD because it's not a POCD land use map, but it will identify those areas where 
we recommend conservation in areas we recommend development. And I can tell you that Cromwell, because of its location on Route 9, on I-91, because of its infrastructure that you have in town, this is an area where we would like to encourage development because you have infrastructure here. Huh. Not the whole town, you know, there's areas that need to be conserved and preserved here, but it makes more sense from a fiscal perspective, but also from an orderly development of the region perspective, you know, in some places you, you know, it's going to be more suited for your know, agriculture or conservation. So that regional zoning map, we would like to have the final say in what you use from our town. Correct. If I'm not speaking out of turn, because I remember seeing that map five years ago with certain color. Oh, the, oh, the state plan. Yes, yes. the state plan map. Yes. Um, where they want certain development, and um, it could be uh, residential, which is in a commercial district, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this that was developed five years ago or so may not work here. Yeah. So, so it will not so be as a like yeah. to say, well, this, we'd like to have a final say. So, so, so first of all, the map will not be a zoning map. We won't recommend land uses. So it won't say residential or commercial, but it will recommend areas where that support development and areas that were probably more supportive of conservation. It doesn't mean that conservation can't happen in a development area or, or development can't happen in a conservation area um, because you will have both, but uh, these, this is a general sort of a larger, a larger vision, but the blobs are bigger, they're less defined because we, we can't tell the town how to zone it, how to zone itself. That's how it rests in the commission. Um, and when it comes to you know, the draft uh, future land use map for this plan, we want, we want the representatives from Cromwell to be bringing it back to this commission, getting your comments and making sure that what we put out there is in sync with what, what you believe your vision of Cromwell is. So, um, but, uh, but, will, but will they be an exact match? Maybe not, but we want them to be supportive. Still over in different areas. Mm -hmm. But we want, we want whatever we present to support what's important to our member towns. Thank you. Yep. Any other ideas of how regional plan could be a support Cromwell? And if not, I'll wrap it up. All right, any comments from, from, from the Zoom? Uh, you can speak up if you, if you want. Otherwise, we'll, I'll wrap it up. Thank you, Sam. You're Thank welcome. You very Thank, much, you. Sam. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, just to wrap it up, I have a little bit more just to tell you of the process. Just one second. All right, thank you for your participation in this discussion. Uh, your input is invaluable in the creation of the Regional Plan of Conservation Development. We know that these are big topics uh, to cover in only 10 minutes each. So, so thank you very much. Um, if you have any comments, you can email me. I have, I have cards with me if you want, or you can email Megan at mgeofliss at rivercloud.org. Um, as we move forward in this pro uh, pro project, we're really at the beginning. Um, we've had a, we had a number of setbacks over the years, but we're gonna get it done. Um, this will be done by the spring of, uh, in the spring of 2021. There are plenty of ways to get involved. Um, we have our website, rivercodregionalplan.org. Um, there you can sign up for email notifications. We'll make sure that um, your chair and Stu are on there so they can get out information to all of you. You can share this presentation, which will be posted to our website uh, with other people in the community that you think should see it. Um, and also you can talk to your RPC members uh, who come to our meetings and can really brief you on those discussions. And then when we create the draft documents, we hope you take the time to look at them and provide comments. So this is the timeline. We're currently in phase two. Um, uh, this is wrapping up our municipal meetings where we're meeting with all the PNZs in the region. Um, and we will be, we'll be wrapping that up by the end of the month. Um, concurrent with this outreach process, We've been working on an existing conditions report, which is currently in a draft, uh, a draft phase. Um, actually, these discussions are really reshaping how we uh, organize and focus our existing conditions report because we've really been learning from you 
and your, and your colleagues in other towns what's important uh, to them. Um, we will be uh, sending that existing conditions report to the RPC, for their review, and eventually it will be made public, and we will distribute that to all the towns. So you'll be seeing that. And then, as you see the other phases, um, we plan to have a final plan by early of next year. Um, I think there's a 60-day public comment period on regional plans. And so we hope that you take the time to review it, get, get your comments, so it can be adopted by the COP. So, all right. If you have any other questions, we can ask, we can, uh, you can ask them now or otherwise. Does so. anybody have any questions for Sam? Uh, anything online? All right. Well, Anthony's still there. Yeah, Anthony's still there. So, <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for hanging in there, and uh, and thank you. Like, this is the first time I'm giving a presentation at mask, and it's really <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I can't breathe in it. So, but well, uh, I really want to say thank you very much yeah. for coming in person and yeah. offering this, and for everybody that's on Zoom and yeah. thank you very much for covering this very important topic. And so, good luck with your. Uh, draft with your final and things like this. And uh, I know that Nicholas now, uh, yep. Christian, will be a great asset to along with Anthony uh, yep. to the con. Thank you very much. And, uh, and, uh, and whatever we can do to facilitate Nicholas keeping you informed and Stu and keeping Stu informed so he can report back to you. Um, uh, as part of this project, if we can come back to you at a later point in this project, we will, but in all likelihood, I don't know if we, uh, it's a great effort to go to 17 planning and zoning commissions. <laughs> um, it's a lot of work. Um, actually, to be honest, COVID, <laughs> COVID helped us do that because attending a Zoom meeting is a little bit yes, easier, but, but thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you.